All right, y'all. Y'all ready for something different? Asking strangers who they think Jesus is. And shout out to our sister in Christ, Hannah Williamson. Go subscribe to her channel right now. And go, you know, buy some merch from her, whatever you got to do. She's been making some really cool content uh, for a very long time. But as of recent, I just discovered her page um, and she's making some really cool content. And it seems like it's, it's you know, targeted more towards like the next generation, you know, younger people who are just now getting into um, getting into Christ and, and, you know, learning about the Bible and stuff like that. Um, but it's really cool. It's awesome stuff. So go check her out. We're going to get into this. And this is like, I watched a little bit of this, but this is like truly uh, a blind reaction. So I, I don't know what I'm walking into. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm walking into. All right. As always, consider becoming a member. Um, if you want to support our work directly and help us be completely independent, the link is down below in the description. All right, but let's go. I'm excited. The truth. The jigs up. Who is Jesus? Nah, I guess he's some man. Yeah? I'm not a Christian, so I'm probably the worst person to ask that. But I'm not, I don't believe in the devil, though. I don't do that. But I don't know, girl. Hey, all right. Well, is this a trick question? No, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Say, I guess it's up for interpretation because there's a bunch of different Jesuses, so. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Ain't no, ain't, mm. Hold on. Let me start that over. <laughs> So, I'm probably the worst person to ask that, but I'm not. I'm hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold nah, on. I guess he's some man. Yeah. I'm not a Christian, so I'm probably the worst person to ask that, but I'm not. I don't believe in the devil, though. I don't do that. But I don't know, girl. Hey, all right. Well, is this a trick question? No, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm saying, I guess it's up for interpretation because there's a bunch of different Jesuses. Oh, <laughs> hold on. It, it, hold on. It ain't up for interpretation. There's one Jesus. There ain't a bunch of different Jesuses, but hey, <laughs> what? Let's continue. So, it's whoever you want him to be. Okay, no, cool. it's not whoever you want him to be. It's not. See, this is this this is literally what the world is trying to. And I, I'm not trying to bash on this, you know, young lady, but this is literally what the world is trying to do. <laughs> Jesus is whatever you want him to be. That would be literally the motto for the world. If if they if it would if if it if they could, that would be the motto. Jesus is whoever you want him to be. Because that just allows you to, to take Jesus, to take the scriptures, to take God and mold him to whatever fits your lifestyle. Even if it's a sinful lifestyle, it's okay because Jesus is okay with it. He loves me. He loves everybody. We're good. Like, like, <sighs> thank you very much. Have a good day. Who is Jesus? Jesus to me is probably my biggest inspiration. I didn't really have a great childhood, so I didn't have many people to look up to. So I kind of stuck on with him and I learned more about him through church and volunteering and stuff. He's kind of been like my anchor. Like if I'm a boat, the water's like really wavy and he just kept me grounded, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. Either of you guys? So Jesus is really like everything. My parents work at a church and I go every Sunday and he's just everything. Like anywhere you look, it's yeah. just Jesus. Yep. Nice. You? He's really someone who you can just like look up to whenever you need. Like whenever you need help, whenever you need anything, you just come to him and he'll help you. And he just makes a really big impact on your life. Yeah. That is awesome. Who is so you know what I appreciate about that interaction? Say what you want to say. The thing that I appreciate about that interaction with the, the three girls, it was a relational response. You know, it was as if they've experienced Jesus in the capacity of having an, a, a relationship, just like you have a relationship with your parents, with your dad, with your friends. That's what I appreciate because that's what gets lost, especially people who, do, who don't know Christianity, who don't know Jesus, who don't know, who don't know Jesus like we know Jesus. They see God as like this person who is just 
no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't know. Nope, you're going to hell. No, nope, you're going to hell. Don't do that. They see God like that, but it's the relational aspect is so much deeper, is so much greater, is so much more than people understand. The Bible says in Genesis that Adam and Eve walked with God. Adam and Eve walked with God. Think about that. God desires a relationship with us, but not just a superficial one, like a, a genuine, authentic relationship. And that's going to look different for every person. So that's what I appreciate about that interaction. Is Jesus. Jesus is God, right? I believe. And any other thoughts? No. I love Jesus. I love God. I am a Christian. Do you mind me asking what you think like makes someone a Christian? If you could say, if somebody asked you, would you say you're a good person? Yes, I'm a yeah. good person. Very good person. Have Treat you? Everybody will. I'm, I'm a good person. Yeah. Have you ever told a lie? Uh, yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so what, is, what does that make you? A liar. Have you ever stolen anything, even if it's small? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Have you ever looked at a woman's lust? Thought things you shouldn't. So is that so that would mean that you've committed adultery in your heart, right? Yeah. So you're a liar, a thief, an adulterer at heart. <laughs> so would you still say you're a good person? Yeah, I'm a great person. Still? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think when you die and you're on, you know, it's judgment day, and God asks you and he shows you all of these sins that you've committed, do you think that... I'm going to hell. you think you're going yeah. to hell? Yeah. Yeah? I ain't going to make it. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. Bruh, she just broke down this dude's whole faith. He literally started out by saying that he's a Christian. She started as asking questions and literally broke down his whole faith. Now he's sitting here talking about he going to hell. Look, we're not good people. We're sinful by nature. But through faith in Jesus, in his finished work, we have the opportunity to become righteous because of the blood of Jesus. Nothing that we can do. We can't earn it. We can't earn it. But because of everything that Jesus did, we have the opportunity to become righteous. We are no longer sinners. We are saints. Although we still may struggle with sin, that's not our, I, that's not our identity anymore. The Bible says, once we had no identity, I wish I could remember the verse. It says, once we had no identity, but now he has given us a new identity. Now he calls us children of, of, of the light. Now he calls us children of God. <laughs> I can't believe she literally just broke down his whole faith. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, you can go to heaven. You can have fellowship with God, you know? Uh -huh. But it's like, I did a lot of good things, too. Mm -hmm. Some bad things. Like, I did a couple bad things, but I did a lot of good things. So We kind of make it, it's, it's kind of like, so if a judge, so if somebody came up, it was in a court of law, right? Uh -huh. And they, the judge said, you know, we've committed you guilty of, you know, murder, stealing, lying, you know, all these things, right? And you said, but I'm a, you know, you're going to let me go, right? You've seen the other good things I've done. Like, it w the judge wouldn't be righteous and, you know, just if he didn't, com like, give you the sentence that you are rightfully and by his grace and dying on the cross for your sins and everyone else's that they will ever commit and have ever committed uh -huh. we can be saved and go to heaven and he can forgive us of all those sins and we can have fellowship with him most importantly out of all of them <laughs> gee this dude like yeah 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 all that heaven stuff all that forgiving stuff what's good with my with my chicken chow mein though <laughs> hey shout out to him though he literally and this is probably how a lot of people feel and this is why i, I said this in a previous video Sharpen your, your sword, sharpen your sword, get in your Bible, read this stuff for yourself, experience the word of God for yourself, ask God to help you, say, God, I need help understanding the Bible, help me understand the Bible, God wants nothing more than for you to come to him honestly and humbly, because he's waiting to help you, especially when it comes to learning more about him. So from somebody to, to, to go from, I'm a Christian, I believe in God, to, I don't know if I'm going to heaven when I pass away. I'm a good person. I did more good than bad. It's concerning, but at least it shows a, a willingness to listen, I guess. I mean, he's here. He's listening still. Even though he's hungry, he's listening still, right? So let's see what he has to say. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Yep. I'm a child of God. I am. For real. And then he says, he really just said, I'm a child of God, bro. All right, hold on. I'll take everything back I said about this dude. He's lost. <laughs> What are you? Are you a child of God? Are you saved? Are you not saved? If you're a child of God, then you're a child of God. You're you're going to heaven and you would have faith in that. You wouldn't be questioning if you're going to heaven or hell. Are you a child of God or are you not? We need to we need to get that straight. We need to get that straight. Yeah, if you repent of all your sins and you ask forgiveness and repentance is turning away from your sins So asking forgiveness from God uh -huh. and repenting of it is saying like, you know I'm gonna try and never do it again I'm never going to turn back to those old ways and you're gonna give your life to him And he wants to have fellowship with you because he loves you so much And that's why he died on a cross right. is for your sins right. and for whoever you know If you pointed to anyone right now that guy right there you see him He died for that guy and that guy may never turn to Jesus ever. That's awesome, isn't it? That's because he loves everyone so go, much I need to go back to church. I ain't gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> Who is Jesus? Jesus is God's only begotten son that was sent down to earth to spread the word of him. Okay. Jesus is me. I think I'm down to earth to spread the word of him. Okay. Jesus is me. I think I, I I thought I, I thought I misheard her. Jesus is you? I didn't know Jesus is not a woman. Look at her face. <laughs> Look at her friend's face. She like I never knew. I walked with you this whole time. All right, go ahead. Explain yourself, Jesus. Come, Jesus, because I'm just like that. Yeah. Hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> Her friend's face. Because <laughs> I'm just like that. You just like that, right? All right. What? All right. Did you guys know that Jesus is the only way, truth, and the life? All have sinned. Oh, uh, she's just trolling, I guess. That's, that's, that's the problem with y'all. Hold on. That's the problem with y'all young people. Y'all just be trolling. Y'all don't y'all don't take nothing serious. Let me give me full screen for this. Y'all don't take nothing serious. You ain't Jesus. <laughs> You're not Jesus. They just trolling. But you know, I'm laughing, but it, you know, it is sad because we've gotten to a, a point in our society where most uh, well. I'll just say it. we've gotten to a point in, in a society where most young people don't really give a you know what about Jesus. They just don't. And I think that's our fault. I was talking to, you know, my best friend the other day about this um, on TikTok Live, actually. And he, I said, you know, it's our responsibility as disciples of Christ to let people know about Jesus in an accurate in an accurate way. It's our responsibility to teach them, to help them understand. It's our responsibility. So if these young people, if the next generation, if they don't understand who Jesus actually is and that he is, he is, yo, Jesus is better than anything that you could ever experience in this world. Like straight up. I, I, I dare you to try to debate me on that. I dare anyone to try to debate me on that. Jesus is better than anything that you could ever experience on this earth. And if we are seeing young people that don't have an interest in Jesus, I, look, I don't blame them. I blame us. I blame the body of Christ because we're the disciples. We're supposed to be preaching the word, the good news. Last time I checked, good news is good news. But a lot of us are out here making the good news seem like it's not good news. So we need to check ourselves to make sure that we're accurately teaching these young people about Jesus and telling them what the good news actually is. 
and fallen short of the glory of God. So all of us have lied at some point, right? And that makes us what? Sinners? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It makes us a liar, right? So the Bible also says that if we look at somebody with lust, then we've already committed adultery with them in our heart. Did you guys know that? No. So we've all done that at some point too, right? Yes, I have. Yeah. And also, if we've ever stolen something, what does that make us? A thief, right? Yeah. So does that mean like, are we a good people like doing all those things? If you go and ask for forgiveness, <laughs> yeah. Right, so what's really cool is God sent his only son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. So if we repent, which means to turn from our sins, to turn from our own way of living, and to turn towards the Lord and put our faith in him, that we can actually be forgiven and have eternal life through Jesus Christ alone. Isn't that cool? Yes. So you can have true life right now here on this earth through Jesus Christ alone. Who is Jesus? Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Born to save us and died on the cross for us. Cool. Got any other thoughts? No, not really. Yeah. Have you had any experience or just like, you know, with Jesus in your life? Yeah, I mean, I was raised in a Methodist household, so I mean, I've had pretty good mm. experiences. I was baptized. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I need all my Methodists in the comment section. What's going on with y'all? I've seen some things. Seen some drag queens up in the church. Seen some other things too. Y'all let me know. I don't know, like, what y'all let me know. Uh, now, every time I hear Methodist, I automatically think about that because it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Continue. And all that, so. yeah. Awesome. Who has Jesus been to you through your life? Very consistent, very something solid, something to hold on to, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Who is Jesus? He, he is, is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. He hello, is. Hello. He is everything. Anyone else? I feel like he is, you know, going off of what she said, the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Son, the water, the air. Yes. You know what I'm saying? He is why, you know, humans function. Whoa, he's not, he he's not the Father and the Holy Spirit. He's one third of the Godhead the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but he's not the Father. Jesus is not the Father. Jesus is not the Holy Spirit. He's one third of the, of the Godhead, but continue. I think this, listen, I, I, I want to make a prediction. I think this interaction is going to be a good interaction. All right, let's see how it goes. He is why good and bad exists. He is why self-discipline, you know what I'm saying? All that good stuff. Anything? They say on everything. Okay, all right. Mind if we do one more question? Yeah. Would you consider yourself a good person? I think I would. A good person? I think I really yeah. would consider myself as a good person, even though I may make mistakes, but I am a good person overall. I got good intentions, and I intend to do good and put good out in the world, yeah. but sometimes I make mistakes, and I could be a yeah. really messed up person. Y'all are good. You're good. I be trying to do my yeah. best to yeah. be a good person, but you know, like he had mentioned, sometimes we get so tied up in worldly, yeah. you know, things yeah. that we kind of yeah. let our flesh get the best of us. So yeah, no. I would consider myself a good person though. I got good intentions. I put good out in the world. Yeah. I tried my best. Yeah. As we are in our flesh, you know, and we're not, you know, we're still on the earth and we're still living in the flesh without Jesus living inside of you. You know, we are still, if you're not, if you haven't invited the Holy Spirit in, you are susceptible to, you know, all the sins of the, you know, right. world and stuff. And yeah. Have you guys ever told a lie? Oh, y'all, let me tell you, I'm a liar, bro. Like, we I'm love the hype. Lie. I just, this I'm not about to lie. I lie. Yeah. 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 I'd be lying. It'd be yeah. unintentional sometimes. Like, you ever be. They girl love lying. <laughs> they love lying. That question got them hyped. All the other questions, yeah, it's cool. You you like lying? Oh, I love. Mm. I, don't, I never met nobody who loved lying. Some people just like lying for fun. And some people are good at lying too. I take back what I said about this interaction being a good interaction. It's not, it's not, I don't know. It fell short of my expectation, but let's see if she can turn it around and, and, and get them to, to understand the gospel. You ever have like somebody call your phone like, oh, what you doing? You like, I'm at the gym, actually. I'm at the gym. The whole time you sitting at home. She said, I'm, I'm getting those gains like, when she watching man. Netflix. But I'm working on myself, though. I'm working on myself. So what would that make you guys? Sinners. Liars or another one? But that, you know, liars? <laughs> How many lies does it take to make a liar? Two. Hit one. One. Okay, you lie to me. You lie. He said two. You lie to me. I'm going to consider you a liar forever. Like, yeah. <laughs> you feel me? So yeah, have you guys ever know. stole anything? Yes. Even if it's small? But see, that's what I was saying. I be making mistakes, mm -hmm. little dumb stuff. Yeah. Like, why would you do that? So that make you a thief, right? Yes. Yeah. That make me a liar and a thief. Yeah. So does that make me a good person? Well, there's one more too. I mean, we could go. There's the whole Ten Commandments. We could. Yeah, oh yeah. Have you ever looked at another man with lust? Even. Oh, yes. I'm not even. About to <laughs> 
The Bible says that if you look at another man or woman with lust, that you have committed adultery with them in your heart. You guys are liars, thieves, and have committed adultery in your heart. So, do you still think you're a good person? Yes. 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 God forgives every sin. And you Whoa. I just caught on to what they were doing. It, it took me a minute. I'm kind of slow sometimes. But they're doing the whole Ray Comfort thing, right? Um, yeah, you're, you're not a good person. You got to come to God. You got to put your faith in Jesus. That's the good news. The good news is that we aren't good people by nature. By nature, we rebelled against God. The same thing that, you know, Adam and Eve did rebelling against God, that's in our nature as well. We can't escape that. We've all committed crimes against God, but the good news is that God sent his, his son down, who was fully man and fully God, to die on the cross, to be the perfect sacrifice for our sins and whomever believes and put their faith in Jesus will be saved. So don't worry about, are you a good person? Look, nobody, nobody is a good person because good is nowhere near what you think it is, especially when you consider what that means from the perspective of God. Without the blood of Jesus to cover our sins, we're wicked. We can't be with God in heaven, so we go to hell. We need the blood of Jesus in order to cover us so that when God looks at us, when it comes for us to face him on judgment day, when we, when we pass away, when God looks at us, he sees us as his son. He sees us as his daughter because our sins are washed away because of the faith that we put in his son, in his son's finished work on the cross. So there's nothing that we can do. We already lost. <laughs> we ain't good. But Jesus, yeah, that dude's him. Jesus is good. Put your faith in him. You should not feel condemned yeah, no, against that because no. that means the devil got you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? God always forgives. Yeah. So always as long forgives. as you repent and yeah. you yeah. ask for forgiveness for your sins. What do you guys think repentance means? Like say? repentance, what do you think it means? Like definitely. Repent. Like, yeah. I be feeling like people get that right. a little bit mixed up because people be repent all the time. You can't keep repent. you know messing up. And then That's keep, right. you know what I'm saying? Because repentance means turning away. Turn away. Yes. And yeah. I keep going back. Am I really repenting or am I trying to trying take advantage to of exactly. God's grace? grace? You know what yes. I'm saying? Yes, we got this. Yeah. So yeah, honestly, I feel like I genuinely feel like I'm a good person. I feel like I've learned a lot of lessons and I've learned a lot of lessons. So I feel like I'm not the same person I used to be. And I feel like repenting for some of my sins has made me a better person. It has made me like have an outlook on life a little differently. Yeah. It's made me change my ways. Yeah. Do you guys think if you died right now today, would you go to heaven or hell? I'm going to heaven. And the only reason why I say that is because I believe in the power of tongue. And if I say what I really am thinking, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I think I'm Oh gonna go my goodness. Hey, this was a good interaction, but for all the wrong reasons. It was a good interaction because now we finally see what they actually believe in. Y'all don't believe in Jesus. Y'all believe in the universe. Y'all believe in a law of attraction. Y'all believe in manifestation. You can't manifest your way into heaven. You can't attract your way into heaven. There's only one way to heaven. You believe in the power of the tongue. You need to believe in the power of Jesus Christ. The power the, the Bible says the tongue is wicked. I sound like a pastor, like a Baptist pastor. The tongue is wicked. I'm not going to do that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I keep doing that. Look, the tongue is wicked. Y'all, you can't put your faith in, in, in yourself. That's basically what you just said, is that you're putting your faith in yourself. You can't, we can't save ourselves. Name one time where you saved yourself. Name one time. Name one time. Because Jesus got on the cross. He got on the cross. Jesus got on the cross one time, was crucified, was put to death. And he saved everyone who shall believe in him. In just that one time. 
You know, it's crazy. Even if we lived a perfect life, I heard somebody else say this. Even if we lived a perfect life, once we died and got to heaven, it would be like, okay, cool. You lived a perfect life. So you can, you know, save, you can save one person because we're human. We're not God. So even if we lived a perfect life, we would only be able to save one person. But when Jesus died, he's able to save all of humanity. That's the difference. Stop. All this law of attraction stuff. You know, it's funny. I'm getting off topic, but it is what it is. Law of attraction. You got it. When you're evaluating whether or not what to believe in, whether it's law of attraction, manifesting, all this new age stuff, whether it's, you know, being an atheist, whether it's different religions, whatever you're evaluating in terms of your beliefs, you need to ask the question, what happens after I die. If I believe in the, in the law of attraction, okay, what happens after I die? If I believe in, um, uh, if I'm, if I'm a Muslim, what happens after I die? If I'm Jewish, what happens, what happens after I die? You need to go and you need to figure out what happens after you die. You need to evaluate these things because we know for a fact, we can all agree on this. Nobody is escaping death. Not a single person is escaping death. So wouldn't that be on your priority list at the top of your priority list to say, hey, uh, yeah, all this all this manifesting, all this law of attraction stuff. It's cool. You know, you know, I'm getting my little abundance, got my little crystals, got my little healing crystals, got my little chakra energies. It's cool. I'm, I'm feeling good. Right. Uh, But when I fall out. And, you know, I'm not here anymore what's going to happen to me then? You can't take them crystals with you. You can't take your manifestations with you. You can't manifest and speak your way into heaven. So y'all need to evaluate that. Christianity is the only religion that has a savior. All the other religions, you have to do works. You have to do X, Y, and Z works. You have to earn your way into heaven. And it's not even guaranteed. All the other religions, you have to earn your way into heaven, and it's not even guaranteed. With Christianity, it's the only religion that has a savior. Put your faith in Jesus, and you're good. Put your faith in Jesus, and you're good. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me get them back on the screen. I feel like I'm going to heaven. heaven. So do you think that if it would be fair, if somebody who maybe killed somebody that's really close to you, that lied to you, that has stole from you, that has committed adultery with someone, and they were at a court of law, and the judge has committed, like, you know, called out, you know, you're guilty for this, do you think that that would be a righteous, good, right judge for letting that person free and letting them walk free on the streets? No. And not making them have to serve any time or sentence for what they've done? Because they might do it again. Or right. someone When you come in the face of death, like, a couple of times, like, you know, anything car accident yeah. you know anything like that it may take a step back and kind of think about things like that so. yeah cool story for you guys really quick actually I, I haven't shared this often which I should more but um, just to kind of show you the power of God and that he really is real and that his spirit and his power is for here it's not just for up in heaven and you know we think that it's like just having a relationship with him is just to get to heaven one day just so we don't have to go to hell it's for you know to have a relationship with him to serve him because for who he is and you know that we should just give him all of our time effort because he should be everything to us so ever since I was 11 years old I have dealt with super bad headaches. I mean, headaches to where they would be, I mean, migraines that would just be like, I couldn't even go throughout my day without like six Advil a day because it was just so bad since I was 11. Thank you so much. I needed that. No Thank problem. You. I appreciate y'all. Yeah. Can I give you guys a hug? Yeah. yeah. It was so nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. You guys are so beautiful today. Thank you. All right, guys. So Dory, DJ, and Lily, which is super cool names, by the way, we're asking the question today, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? <laughs> Whatever you think, whatever first comes to mind. And he said, this is a shorter question. Bro, you got a cross on. This is what are you? You just witnessed the power of the Holy Spirit because I was about to go off and the Holy Spirit put me in check. She got a cross on her neck. She's got a cross on her neck. And she don't know who Jesus is. Why do people be wearing crosses and Jesus pieces? 
and they don't know who Jesus is. They be just wearing it for fashion. It can be. It can be. We're asking the deep questions today. Go ahead. It ain't a deep question. All I'm about to say, take that cross off your neck. <laughs> if you can't even say who Jesus is, take that cross off your neck. It's not just fashion. This is the problem. It's not just fashion. It's not just a story. It's not just cool. Don't just get a cross tattoo on you because it's cool. Don't just get a Bible verse tattooed on you because it's cool. I, I understand what you're doing. Understand what you're doing. Understand who he is before you start doing all this other stuff. Like, by the look on her friend's face, I can already tell her friend don't even know who Jesus is either. And look, I'm not judge. I'm not trying to judge these people. I guess I am judging the one with the cross on because I would expect her to know uh, who Jesus is. But regardless, let's continue. Like that person in your head or like when you're like I don't know why I'm doing this but I'm doing it because like my heart or that gut feeling or whatever I feel like that's Jesus because he's guiding you and you're following your path and you might not know why you're following that path but you're just following it and it's like I trust my gut not that he's my gut instinct but it's like I trust that gut instinct I don't know why but I'm doing it and it's like Jesus is that person that is guiding me. I have no way to like describe it. Describe that. I have no way to describe that. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Jesus is love. Jesus is love. He is the definition of love. He is kind. He is patient because he was the one who died. And then three days later, he rose again. And oh, okay. She knows something. She knows something. She was just shy. She got a little stage fright, a little camera shy. He died for our sins and yeah. he was sacrificed. And that just shows you how much love that he has for each and one of every one of us. And it's a Maverick City song. It says that if he dresses the like the lilies, he even gives mm. the lilies the smallest flower that has no purpose. He dresses them and makes them so pretty. And then if he How much more does he love you? Does that for a lily? What does he does do for us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that just shows that Jesus is love. Yeah. He loves yeah. us. So Yeah. I mean the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we've all sinned before right. Christ and you know, we have no hope without Jesus. And yeah. you know, God is a just judge. And so we're all guilty. Like we're all guilty of sinning against God. We've all lied, we've all stolen something small, even if it was just like music off the internet. And if we've even looked at a person with lust in our heart, the Bible says we've already committed adultery with them. So we've we've all done those things. And what does that make us? It makes us a lying, even adulterous person. Yeah. And so we're guilty of sin. And so, you know, people think like, oh, like I'm a good person. Like, I'll just go to heaven but the thing is like we need a savior so jesus was the ultimate sacrifice yeah. who died on the cross for our sins yeah. like god could have just sat up there in heaven and be like you know what? i'm just gonna chill here but the yeah. cool thing is like he sent his son jesus to this earth to die on the cross to be that perfect sacrifice mm -hmm. who lived a sinless life and he took that sin upon him and so through his death burial and resurrection yeah through what he did we can have eternal life and true life through him yeah. if we will ask for forgiveness if we repent of you know how we're living in the world so literally turning from the world turning from ourselves and turning to jesus and putting our yeah. faith in him we can be saved and have true life through him well you guys did awesome Thank high fives you. let's go i don't know i put my arm all the way up there for <laughs> <laughs> I was like, high five. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. All right, guys, we're back in the studio now. And wow. Well, once again, um, shout out to Hannah. Y'all go f uh, follow Hannah. I'll put her channel in the link down below in the description. Uh, listen, here's my final take. I think, you know, obviously, like I said, this world is drifting further and further away from Jesus. And that's evident. You can see everything that's going on. Like, it's not hard to tell. Um, but I think it's our responsibility to make sure that this world has an accurate view of who Jesus actually is. I think sometimes we, we, we just don't know how to share the gospel. And sometimes it takes personal experiences and sharing your uh, personal encounters that you have with Jesus at a human level, at a relational level, to get people to understand that Jesus is so much more than what you think he is and that he can do so much more in your life. And then from there, we can get them to understand, you know, the actual good news of what Jesus did for us, how he laid down his life for us. But even, you know, the people who, who, who said that they knew who Jesus was and kind of explained it, you can kind of tell that they are still needing to sharpen their sword. And so do I. Like, oh, my gosh. 
here's the thing. I don't know everything about the Bible. I'm not perfect. I'm still learning. Um, and I think that's always going to be a constant process of learning and, and deepening our relationship with God. But I think we have to be intentional, especially now in the times that we live in. We have to be intentional. We have to recognize that this world is becoming more and more rebellious towards God. And that's going to have to force us to become more and more on fire and intentional about pursuing God. So that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, go check out Hannah's con uh, content. I'll link her channel down below in the description. Um, that's it. <laughs> I'm out.